The Rolex Air King has been kind of an oddball in the Swiss watchmakers lineup of watches. It was never Rolex's most popular model, and while it was originally intended to honor the British air pilots in World War II, nothing about this watch screams pilot watch to me. Now despite its quirks, vintage Air Kings are best known to be one of the more affordable Rolex models you can purchase today. So is it worth buying? Let's find out. So if this video sounds like deja vu to you, it might be because you watched my review of the Air King Reference 5500 that I made several months ago, which I highly recommend you watch if you haven't, because this video kind of serves like a sequel to that video. So what's different this time around? Well this is the Reference 14000, the successor to the Reference 5500, and with that you get an updated dial design, sapphire crystal instead of acrylic, the caliber 3000 movement with 28,800 beats per hour over the old caliber 1520 that only had 18,900 beats per hour, and a bracelet with solid links instead of rolled links. Otherwise, there's quite a few similarities between these watches. They both have a non-chronometer rate of movement with a 42 hour power reserve with no complications, and they feel pretty similar on the wrist since they're both 34 millimeters in diameter. It fits fine on my six inch wrist, but I can imagine that anyone with a wrist size larger than 6.5 inches will probably feel like it's too small for them. As for the unboxing, I actually did this in a separate video which you can also watch if you want the full unboxing experience, but the important part is that the watch came with its original box and papers, and the papers indicate that this watch was made in 1992, so this watch just turned 30 years old this year in 2022. The watch also came with service papers from 1992 as well, so it also hadn't been serviced in 30 years. Now for this review, I'm going to be spending most of the time talking about the design. The standard Air King 14000 has a sunburst dial with baton indices, but this variant has a Buckley dial, which means that it features a solid white color and shortened indices, each with an accompanying Roman numeral. By the way, in case you didn't know, they're called Buckley dials because John Buckley, a vintage watch dealer in New York, liked Rolexes that had the Roman numerals on them, and thus the term Buckley dial was born. I'm also a fan of the design of the Buckley dial, it makes me feel like I'm wearing a piece of art on my wrist. Although you could say that all watches are works of art, watches like these especially feel like you could find it on a display in a museum or an art gallery. You've also probably noticed that the Roman numerals on this watch are printed instead of applied. Now usually I like the look of applied indices more because it gives a watch an extra layer of depth and it makes it look more premium, but honestly, looking at the photos of Buckley dials with applied Roman numerals, I would say that the applied numerals actually looks more cheap compared to having them printed on the dial. Now despite my praise for the Buckley dial, I don't think the dial on this Air King is perfect. First of all, I think the minute markers are a bit too long. It makes the dial feel smaller, and this watch is already on the small side to begin with, so it can't afford to look any smaller. Plus, they kind of remind me of like a sea urchin or maybe spider legs. And in general, I feel like the size of this watch is too small for the Buckley design. The minute markers, hour markers, and Roman numerals are all being crammed into a 34mm watch. If the watch was 39mm or even just 36mm in diameter, that would allow the components of the dial to have some breathing space. So at this point in the video, we need to ask ourselves, what even is an Air King? As mentioned before, it's supposed to honor British air pilots from World War II, so you'd expect the design of it to be of a pilot's watch. The design of a pilot's watch can vary, but they typically have at least one of the following features. A GMT hand to track two different time zones large Arabic numbers accompanying each hour marker to be able to read the time easily, complications that help the user complete flight calculations, and a generous amount of loom so that the pilot can read the time in low light conditions. Both the Air King 5500 and 14000 lack any of these features, and not only that, the design of the Air King isn't even exclusive to the Air King. Here's the standard version of the Air King 14000 in comparison to the Oyster Perpetual 1002, and you can see that they're basically indistinguishable. Even the Buckley Dial Air King that I have here is practically identical to this Oyster Perpetual Date Reference 15000, except for the date complication of course. The main difference here is that all these Air Kings are non-chronometer rated compared to Rolex's other lineups. No wonder the Air King didn't have a huge following, it was definitely lacking identity back in the day. Overall though, I do like the design. I heard that some people don't like Buckley Dials, and while they don't have the sporty look of other Rolex watches, they definitely look classy, which makes this a good choice as a dress watch. Also the contrast between the markers and the indices makes it very legible. Now in terms of the price, this can vary depending on the dial and the condition. You can generally find it between 3600 to 5000 Canadian dollars, so that's about 2600 to 3600 US dollars. I bought mine for 3600 and sold it for 3800, but I did get a service for $500 and I did pay $200 for duty and fees, so I did end up losing money in the end. Rolex watches are losing value currently, 
it's affecting the new models the most, but it will eventually trickle down to the vintage models. So some of you might be wondering why I bought this watch, and there's several reasons for that. The first one is that the Canadian dollar to Japanese yen exchange rate was really favorable at the time, so I thought that this was a good time to buy a luxury watch. This was also around the time that I sold my Grand Seiko, so I did have some extra cash flow. The second reason why I bought it is that I wanted to have a Rolex in my collection. I'm not the type of person to only buy from one watch brand, I like having a diverse collection. And my collection at the time was missing a Swiss luxury watch, so I thought that Rolex could fill in that gap. And the final reason why I bought this watch is that it solved many issues I had with the Air King 5500 because I did have the Rolex Air King in the past, but with this new model, I have the higher beat rate, a solid link bracelet, sapphire crystal, a less boring dial, and square ends for the hands instead of pointed, which I actually like a lot more. But I did end up selling this watch, and it's for two main reasons. The first one is power reserve. Because the watch only has a 42 hour power reserve, that means that if I don't wear it for two days, it'll stop running. And the process of having to unwind the crown, give it a few winds, then pull open the crown, adjust the time, close the crown, and screw it back in, I just found it to be quite tiring and cumbersome. Some people like doing that process with their mechanical watches, but I'm not a huge fan. I like watches with at least a 70 hour power reserve, because that way, 2-3 to three days can pass and the watch will still be running. The second reason why I ended up selling it was the economy. Inflation is up, interest rates are up, so now is not the time to spend large sums of money. So in conclusion, the Rolex Air King 14000 is an oddball of a watch. The design isn't unique compared to other Rolexes, it doesn't have a chronometer rating unlike the vast majority of Rolexes. The 34mm size definitely hasn't held up over the years, as 36mm has now become accepted as the minimum case size for men's watches. And overall, the name Air King doesn't really make sense here, because I don't see any nods to aviation in the execution of this watch. Rolex definitely identified this as an issue, which is why their current Air King now looks more distinct from Rolex's other models, and has features of a pilot's watch like an easy to read dial and loomed hands and indices. But at the end of the day, the Air King 14000 with the Buckley dial is a Rolex that won't break the bank while still being a great looking watch and will surely last for years to come. And if you really want that chronometer rating, the Air King 114200 is pretty much the same watch but with a chronometer movement. So anyways, that is my review of the Rolex Air King 14000. Thank you so much for watching. This is going to be my last video for 2022, so it's been quite the journey. We'll be starting 2023 with a state of the collection. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it because a ton of new watches came in this year, including ones that I haven't featured on the channel yet. But until then, subscribe for more videos, have a happy holidays, and I'll see you guys next year.